Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Rick's Truth Cast. Today, we are featuring President Joe Biden's first sit down interview since the debate, exclusively on Rick's Truth Cast. Earlier today, I taped the interview. There are no cuts, no edits. We have not touched it. At this crucial moment in the presidential campaign, here it is. Mr. Biden, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Mr. President, let me ask you about the presidential debate you participated in in just over a week ago. You were a train wreck. Perhaps you could explain to the American people just what went wrong. Now, look. It's a bad episode. Uh, but, but with all due respect, Mr. President, it wasn't an episode of a TV series. It was the ever-important presidential debate. I prepared what I usually would do, sitting down. So, okay, fine. Anyways, I think... It's obvious to everyone that uh, Mr. Trump, without any single doubt, twice removed, no carrying the one, was the absolute winner of the debate. He also lied 28 times. Oh, Mr. President, he couldn't have lied that many times. As I said, they pointed out in that debate he lied 27, 28 times the times, or whatever number, over 20 times. Anyways, Mr. President, I heard that you lied 13 and a half times. What do you think of that? I don't think I did, no. Well, fine. I guess we can just agree to disagree. So after that terrible debate performance, which you uh, recently admitted you almost fell asleep on stage, what did you do afterwards? I suppose you probably went home to bed, right? After that debate, I did 10 major events in a row, including until 2 o'clock in the morning after that debate. (laughs) Mr. President, stop it. You're killing me here. Did events like this today. Large crowds, overwhelming response, no no, no slipping. Excuse me, did, did you just say no slippied? No, no slipping. Okay, well, Mr. President, I've been wanting to ask you this forever. Do you do impressions? That's what this is about. All right, all right. Could you, could you please do an impression of, of you not knowing what you will do next? Oh, Biden, I don't know, man. What's he going to do? He may bring me down. He may. <laughs> that was priceless. Anyways, I want to take us back in time a few weeks there. i got to play this footage. This is from the D-Day anniversary. You were on stage with uh, French President Emmanuel Macron, and what the hell happened here, Mr. President? Did you poop in your pants? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my God. I knew it. That's disgusting, Mr. President. It cost me a really bad night, bad run. Yeah, I'll say you had the bad runs that night, all right. I just wasn't in control. Oh, man, you sure weren't. Well, moving along, Mr. Biden, how's your health these days, b- besides the incontinence? Would you, for instance, be able to run the 110 flat? The 110 flat? Yes, the 110 flat. Can I run the 110 flat? No. But I'm still in good shape. Well, don't feel so bad. I'm not sure I could run it either. So anyways, uh, what do you do in your spare time, Mr. President, like when you're, when you're not campaigning? You know, not only am I campaigning, but I'm running the world. And every single day, for example, today, before I come out here... I'm on the phone with the, with the Prime Minister of... Well, anyway, I shouldn't get into detail, but... Uh, uh, th- th- then don't, Mr. President. With Netanyahu. I'm on the phone with the new Prime Minister of England. Oh, my God! I hope he didn't just violate national security! George. I'm Rick, Mr. President. Okay, Mr. President, of the world, apparently. Would you say you're the best president in U.S. history or just a so-so president? I don't want to take too much credit. Well, that's good. It's important to be humble. Maybe you're a swell guy after all. Mr. President, what if I told you I'd like to invite you and the White House staff to join me and the Rick's Truthcast staff next weekend? We're having a mega giant party with fireworks, marshmallows, a tuba player, and three magicians. We're on our way. We're on our way. Awesome. That's just awesome. Anyways, Joey, can I call you Joey? Yes. So, since the debate, the, the latest polls show you trailing in the popular vote and trailing even more in the, the key swing states. You guys keep saying that, George. For the last time, it's Rick. And I'll say it as many times as I want. It's my show. The polls are showing you trailing behind Mr. Trump and... Uh, Trump is a pathological liar. Trump is... He, he is... Have you ever seen anything Trump did that benefited somebody else, not him? I'm, you can't answer, I know. Wait! You didn't let me answer! Uh, let me see. Before COVID, unemployment hit a 50-year low. He helped draft the Abraham Peace Accords. He even crossed the demilitarized zone in North Korea without any... I don't, I don't buy that. What do you mean you don't buy that? All these things happened. All right, fine. Well, here's a question for you, Mr. Smart Guy. I mean, Mr. President. I'm considering betting a few bucks on this game coming up next week. 
Who do you think will win the upcoming U.S. cricket game? The San Francisco Unicorns or the Texas Super Kings? It's a toss-up. It's a toss-up. Oh, well, okay. That wasn't very helpful. But it's a good game, though. I don't buy that. What? Well, let me just Google that for a second there, you negative Nancy. Cricket is a good sport for developing overall fitness, stamina, hand-eye coordination. Well, I don't think those critics know what they're talking about. It's not critics, it's cricket, Mr. President. Keep it together. Well, anyways, many prominent Democrats are saying that you should step aside after your debate performance. They, among other things, they don't think you can win. So I ask you, Mr. President, what would it take to convince you to step aside and let somebody else run? Well, it depends if, if the Lord Almighty comes out and tells me that, I might do that. Really? Well, that's just... Okay, so how about this scenario then? Let's say Chuck Schumer, Nakeem Jeffries, and Nancy Pelosi come down and say, we're worried that if you don't step aside, we're also going to lose the, the House and the Senate. What would you do then? <laughs> They're not going to do that. Are you sure? Well, yeah, sure. Look, I mean, if the Lord Almighty came down and said, Joe, get out of the race, I'd get out of the race. The Lord Almighty's not coming down. What if we're living in the end times right now? Armageddon happens, the opening of the seventh seal, the four horsemen ride, and we have the second coming. You know, when Jesus the Lord returns to earth. If all that comes to pass, and the Lord Jesus Almighty approaches you and says, Biden, you're unable to beat Trump, you must step aside. Would you do it then? I'm not going to answer that question. It's not going to happen. All right, all right, fair enough. But it might. Here's one. How much money did your campaign raise? since the debate. But less, less than 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. Now, in the very off chance that you lose this election, <clears throat> how will you feel in January? I feel as long as I gave it my all and I did the goodest job. I'm sorry, did you just say the goodest? The goodest job I know I can do. Who's going to be able to be in a position where I'm able to keep the Pacific Basin in a position where we're, we're at least Checkmating China now. Okay, okay. Who's going stop, to Mr. Who's President. Going to just, just please stop. Anyways, thank you for coming, Mr. President. Thank you.